In John chapter 1, beginning in verse 35, it says, The next day John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent that day with him. It was about the 10th hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. You know, this morning we're going to look at uh, a few of the, these first disciples, and I want to begin looking at Andrew's encounter with Jesus. And, and we notice, first of all, that John the Baptist was the one who introduced Andrew to Jesus. John had been preparing the way of the Lord uh, for some time now. Last week we, we looked at John the Baptist's encounters with Jesus and how that at the baptism of Jesus, John saw heaven open and the Spirit of God descend upon him, upon Jesus. And then God spoke and said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And, and John knew that this was the Messiah, that, that God had sent him to identify and preach about. And, and during John's ministry, he was preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And his whole purpose was to help people realize their need for God and how that they had drifted so far away from God. And so he, he preached repentance. He convicted the people of their sins and, and called them to return to the Lord and to humble themselves and receive the Messiah who was at hand. And Andrew was one of the people that, that was there during these times. Right after Jesus' baptism, John began pointing all of his disciples to Jesus. He, he pointed out that Jesus was the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And, and he told, told them that he must decrease I'm sorry, that Jesus must increase and that John the Baptist must decrease. And, and so Andrew was soaking this all up. And when he saw Jesus coming and John say, behold, the Lamb of God, Andrew and the other disciple immediately went and followed Jesus. And it's interesting that the other disciple is not named. Most people believe that it's the apostle John, the one who's writing the gospel of John and just wanting to uh, stay incognito and just uh, keep the focus on Jesus. But Andrew and this other disciple went and began following Jesus. Jesus noticed that they were following him and turned around and said, what is it you want? They asked him, where are you staying? And Jesus says, come, I'll show you. And so they went and spent that whole afternoon with Jesus. And, and it was during this time that, that Andrew for sure was convinced that Jesus truly was the Messiah that the Old Testament had prophesied about, the Son of God. And so after spending that day, Andrew went and he told his brother Simon Peter about it. And in John chapter 1, 41 and 42, it says, the first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. So and Andrew, after being introduced to Jesus himself, immediately went and found his brother Peter 
and told him about Jesus. And it's interesting, it says that this was the first thing Andrew did. He didn't just, you know, forget about that event that night with Jesus, that, that time he had spent with Jesus, and go on with his life or just rejoice in his own finding of the Messiah. But, but he went and told his brother Peter, and that was really important to him. And he told him about his discovery, how that he had spent that afternoon with him and, and how Jesus had answered his questions. And, and I can just picture him going through, you know, each of these conversations that he and the other disciple had had with Jesus and, and walking away from there just totally convinced that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God. And then he didn't just tell Peter about the Lord. He brought him to Jesus. And I, I think that this is a really important point as well, that, that the goal is always to bring people to Jesus, not to just tell them about Jesus, but to actually bring them into relationship with Jesus. And that's what Andrew did. And because of what Andrew did, Simon Peter would go on to become one of the great apostles of the first century. You know, we make so much uh, to do about Peter and about all of his accomplishments. And, you know, we study his life and see his growth as a Christian and his, his dedication and commitment to Jesus. And, and even into the book of Acts, we, we see Peter uh, becoming this bold and aggressive uh, disciple of Jesus going into all the world and preaching the gospel, being arrested and, and standing up for Jesus. But if it were not for Andrew, Peter would have never become a Christian probably. And I think about how, you know, sometimes we, we, we look at people and, and we judge how, how important they are in the ministry, and we look at how great a preacher they might be, or, or the, the wonderful works in their ministry that they do. But be, behind each of those people, I think it's important that we remember that someone led them to Christ, and that without that someone, that those ministries wouldn't be there. In verse 43, it goes on to say, the next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me, Philip. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, said Philip. Think about this encounter that Philip now has with Jesus. It's interesting that John the Baptist pointed Andrew and the other disciple to Jesus. But here it says that Jesus himself called Philip. And I think it's interesting that Philip, you know, knew Jesus, that, that somehow that Philip had heard about Jesus. Maybe he was even one of Jesus' disciples uh, from, I'm sorry, one of John the Baptist's disciples. And that the word that had spread around about Jesus had reached him. But the interesting part about this in verse 43 is that it says, Jesus finding Philip. He said to him, follow me. And I think that could be interpreted as implying that Philip already knew Jesus and had a relationship with him. That, that he, had, he had probably met Jesus at some other time. And, and Jesus was just about to leave town. And he actually went out and found Philip and said, come on, Philip, follow me. And I, and I thought that that was an interesting point. And Philip, just like Andrew, 
immediately went and found Nathanael and brought him to Jesus. Again, you know, just the idea that that this couldn't be kept from others, that that when they received Jesus and and became a follower of him, they immediately wanted to tell others about it. In verse 43, it says, when Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me, Nathanael said. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. When Philip introduced Nathanael to Jesus, his first attempt was met with skepticism. Nathanael said, Nazareth, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And, you know, I think that that's a pretty typical response of a lot of people today, that, that there's skepticism. If you've ever shared your faith with others or invited them to church, you've probably had some of them kind of reject it with some remark like, well, you know, I'm happy for you, but that's, that's really not for me. Or, you know, the Bible, uh, I think it's just man's writing. I think it's, it's more of a hoax. Or, or, you know, Christians, they're delusional. Uh, they, they are following this archaic book that really isn't uh, true at all. And, and the fact is that, that in spite of that, Philip persisted. He didn't just stop when Nathaniel, you know, threw up this, this red flag and, and, and say, okay, uh, Nathaniel's not interested. I'm, I'm going to just move on. Instead, he said, come on, Philip, or come on, Nathaniel, come see. Come, come and meet him for yourself. And I think, I think about how that, that's something that we need to learn how to do, that, that we, we shouldn't be hindered from pursuing, leading people to Christ because they're skeptics. Instead, we need to encourage them and lead them to Jesus, bring them to, to know him. Jesus told Nathaniel what only Nathaniel could know, that he was under the fig tree before Philip called him. And that was enough for Nathaniel to believe that this had to be Jesus Christ. This, this had to be the Son of God. No one else could know that. And it, it just makes me think about how thoroughly Jesus knows all of us. That he knows, you know, what we're doing right now. He knows where we're at. He knows what's going on in our, in our hearts and our minds. He knows what kind of people we are. The first thing he said to Nathaniel is, here's a man with, with you know, who, who speaks his mind without fault. Jesus knows us. He knows us inside and out. And, and that's a pretty humbling feeling when we realize that, that there's nothing that's hidden from him, but that Jesus knows it all. And, and that led Nathaniel to believe in Jesus. And what I take away from these first encounters with Jesus by these disciples is that it had this tremendous impact on their lives, that it changed their lives forever. And, you know, after this, sometime later, Jesus literally called the disciples to follow him. And in, in Matthew chapter in verses 18 through 28, it says this. It says, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in the boat 
with their father Zebedee preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. So this had a tremendous impact on their life, so much so that they were willing to leave everything and follow Jesus, to walk away from their their jobs, to walk away from their comfortable lives, you know, in their communities and their home, and begin following Jesus everywhere he went. The question I want to ask you this morning, and this is really the point, is has Jesus had an impact on your life that way? You know, at the end of Jesus' ministry, after he had been resurrected from the dead and, and he was just about to return to heaven, he met with his disciples and he gave them the Great Commission in Matthew 28 verses 18 through 20, and it says this, Then Jesus said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Think about your encounter with Jesus. You know, all of us were introduced to Jesus by someone. Some Christians, they grew up in the church. You know, they went to Sunday school every week. And and maybe it was their parents who who really taught them about Jesus and introduced them to, to Jesus. Or maybe it was the preacher or a Sunday school teacher, or someone at church. Some of you were introduced to Jesus many times in different settings. I think about my own life. You know, I think about how uh, I can remember in my early years when I was six or seven, uh, going to vacation Bible school and, and learning about Jesus there. And then sometime later in my teens, I can remember a, a young girl uh, at junior high school who, who began to teach me about Jesus and, and, and tell me what, what a blessing it was to be a Christian. But it never really sunk in. In my 20s, I can remember uh, sitting in a parking lot in Escondido in a car with a bunch of friends just hanging out. and smoking weed and and someone came up and knocked on the window and we rolled it down and he he handed me a track and he began to share with me about Jesus and and how he could really change my life and help me you know have a better life than what I was living and I can remember you know just rolling up my window and laughing and joking with the other guys in the car about how stupid that was and and you know how how ridiculous Christians are, and and it still hadn't set in. But then later, a friend of mine shared it, his faith with me, and and some of you were introduced by a friend or a loved one. It was my best friend. It was Bob Fetcher, and and his father actually was. A minister and and he was studying to become a personal evangelist and and I remember my my friend Bob inviting me over to their house to to meet his parents and uh, his his dad Bob Chandonet asked me if I wanted to study the Bible and I said sure and and so we began studying the Bible and we began uh, meeting once a week but but Bob would call me every day and and ask me how my day was going and ask me if I had read some scripture today and what I thought about it. And and he he began to answer all my questions and to encourage me. And 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 that's how I became a Christian. But regardless of how you became a Christian or when you became a Christian, in every case, someone 
help to convince us that Jesus really is the Son of God. They took the time to share the gospel with us. They took the time to answer our questions and to help us to understand better God's plan for our life. Someone had a part in bringing us to Christ. And it's our duty to introduce others to Christ. It should be our passion. It should be, it should be just like Andrew and Philip. And, and the minute we hear about Jesus, it should just light our hearts up and, and cause us to want to go and tell our friends and tell others about Jesus. I can remember after I was baptized, I immediately began to talk to all my friends about Jesus and, and about salvation and, and how it was changing my life and, and what my future looked like and, and trying to encourage them to go to church with me. We've all been called to call others to Jesus. That's part of the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In Matthew 28, verse 20, it says, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And the command that he just gave them was to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And so we, like Andrew and Philip, need to begin sharing our faith first with our family and our friends, those who are not saved, that are close to us. You know, Andrew immediately went and found his brother Simon Peter and told him about Jesus. And, and Philip went and found Nathaniel, his friend, and told him about Jesus. And I think about, you know, if we really care for our families and for our friends, it's important that we share the gospel with them. You know, I'm not encouraging us to harass them and, and keep bugging them about it if they, if they don't want to. But I'm talking about loving them enough to really try to bring them to Jesus. We should have that passion for especially our family and our friends and our loved ones. But then it must go beyond that, that we must go into all the world and preach the gospel. And I take that to mean that we, we share with people that we don't know. Maybe just acquaintances that, that we meet at the grocery store or at the gas station or, or out and about or our co-workers. But we need to be sharing the gospel with everyone. Right? Mark said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, every human being. And, and that should be our goal to everywhere we go and all the people that we meet that we want to share with them Jesus and, and who he is and what he did for us and, and share with them what he's done for our lives. You know, the Gospel of John was written for that very purpose, to help lead others to Jesus. And, and I would encourage you, this week, to just use your quiet time to read the Gospel of John. Because John really wants to show how making disciples is, is part of our daily walk in life. That, that sharing our faith with others should be something that we're doing all the time. In John chapter 21, uh, after Jesus had been resurrected and he was showing himself to people, you know, his own disciples had thought that, that Jesus was dead and it was all over. And, and Thomas was one of those people. And, and if you remember, you know, when word got around that Jesus had risen from the dead and he was alive again, Thomas was the one that doubted that. He said, you know, I won't believe it until I see him with my own eyes and, and put my fingers in the holes and, and all those things. And of course, 
you know, we know reading John 21 that Jesus appeared to Thomas and said, look, Thomas, it is I. Come, touch me. Put your hands in my side. See it as I, the Lord. And when Thomas saw him, Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. And then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen me and believe. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of its disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. I, I want to encourage you this morning to rediscover Jesus. Remember what it was like when you first became a Christian and, and the excitement of, of really having a relationship with Jesus and, and how that, that filled you with passion and, and you wanted to tell others about it. You know, we have become so indifferent toward sharing our faith with others and, and so afraid to encounter opposition or skepticism or unbelief that we have, we have quit doing it. And I just want to encourage you this morning that we need to be doing it. We need to be sharing our faith with others. People need Jesus so badly. And, and we have that good news. And, and let's, let's be more like Andrew and Philip, who immediately, the first thing that they did was go out and share it with others.